Hi everyone, we're going to continue with our third module, Natural Disasters. Today we will continue to read Quaking Earth, Racing Waves by Rachel Young. Our learning target for today is I can examine how language contributes to an author's voice. So we'll really be thinking about author's craft, and author's craft is the language and techniques a writer uses to make his or her writing interesting and communicate ideas to the reader. So when we're thinking about author's voice, we're going to be thinking about the author's writing style that makes his or her writing unique. An example would be an author's voice may change depending on the genre of the text. So we're going to continue with our text, starting on page 208. Sinking Islands. The corals weren't the only evidence of underground rumblings in Indonesia. The Sunda Megathrust Fault at the bottom of the Indian Ocean marks the collision between two of the plates that make up the Earth's surface, one oceanic and the other continental. Between earthquakes, the plates are stuck together. As the oceanic plate slips slowly downward, it squeezes the continental plate sideways about half an inch a year and drags it down a few inches a year as well. The islands on top of the continent, continental plate are dragged down too, as much as half an inch a year. The more years between earthquakes, the more the islands sink, and the more stress builds up at the fault. The islanders could tell the waterline was shifting. They can see their boardwalks and harbors sinking, Say said. Trees that once grew tall on shore were now underwater, and wells that once gave fresh water were, were full of salty seawater instead. But no one thought that this had anything to do with earthquakes or tsunamis. Evidence from Global Positioning System, or GPS, stations they'd set up to measure, the, measure island sinking had also convinced the scientists that a big quake could rock the area at any time. As we came to realize what we were learning and how much, people at, how much at risk people were, said Say, we couldn't keep quiet. In July 2004, Say visited five islands and gave presentations at schools, churches, mosques, and village squares. Say and his colleagues planned to return the following year to visit more islands and teach more people about their research. Then, six months later, a quake struck. Within our picture, it says, a geographer prepares a GPS station in Indonesia to collect data. What makes the earth quake? Next time you're outside, jump up and down. Stomp your feet a few times. The ground seems solid, right? Well, not entirely. The part of the earth you're standing on, called the lithosphere, is rock solid. But the lithosphere is very thin. If the earth were the size of an apple, the lithosphere would be about as thick as the apple's skin. If you dug a hole through the earth, you'd find that as you went deeper, what's inside becomes hotter and more gooey. The solid lithosphere is broken up into close-fitting plates that drift on top of the molten rock underneath. We don't feel the plates moving because they're usually drifting only a few centimeters a year, about as fast or slow as your fingernails grow. Earth's plates don't all move parallel to each other and in the same direction. At the boundary where two plates meet, called a fault, they bump and push into each other. They're wedged together most of the time, but stress builds up as the plates bump and grind together. Finally, the plates break free along a section of the fault, releasing pent up energy in an earthquake. The force makes objects move up and down and in a lateral motion. 
So that's a side to side motion. And it causes, and, and it can cause great destruction. There are several types of faults. The Sunda Fault offshore from the Batu and Mentawai Islands is called a megathrust, where the underwater oceanic plate dives under the continental plate. So you have the continental plate sitting on top, and the oceanic plate is being forced underneath. And as it does that, the, the continental plate kind of gets dragged along and it moves a little bit. And there's all of this energy as it's grinding together. And eventually the energy gets so pent up that it gets released and the continental plate will shift. And that is what we have as an earthquake. 